time for the 49ers versus Cardinals game preview show. What's the game plan for the 49ers? We're going to talk about that. What's necessary for the 49ers to accomplish to defeat the Arizona Cardinals and pick up their first divisional win of the season? Plus, wow, that's bold predictions. And we're going to predict who's going to win this game. All that and more in this episode of 49ers Cutback. at the stick from who's got it better than us to brick by brick it's always the 49ers way from off season to game day yeah we talk back it's the 49ers cut back It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. It's that time again. It's game preview time, which means we get to talk about the game plan. We get to get into the X's and O's and how Kyle Shanahan plans to attack the Arizona Cardinals defense and also how Nick Sorensen plans on trying to stop James Conner, this fantastic Arizona Cardinals running game. And of course, Tyler Murray and his ability to create outside the pocket and to win using his legs. It's always interesting when you have to play a dynamic quarterback like Kyler. We throw in a very talented run game with James Conner and others like Trey Benson, and you've got a real recipe for a disastrous potential game plan. So it's always a little bit tough, but it's fun to talk about 49ers versus Cardinals in a matchup that's going to be all about a divisional game. And these teams know each other well. Right, You've got Jonathan Gannon. He came over from Philadelphia a couple years ago, and now he's got this Arizona Cardinals team uh, kind of in the midst of learning his system and being able to run his system. And I think so far they've done a pretty good job. They've been dangerous this season. They pushed the Bills to the breaking point in week one. Bills able to get the win. Sign of a really great team. But Arizona was in it. They pushed Detroit Lions too. Detroit Lions... Got a seven-point victory against the Arizona Cardinals. Then the Cardinals absolutely mollywopped the Los Angeles Rams in a big way. But then you look at last week, and the Washington Commanders do the same thing to the Arizona Cardinals. Who are the Arizona Cardinals? Are they the team that got absolutely smacked by the Commanders? Are they the team that blew out the Los Angeles Rams? I think they're actually somewhere in the middle. And this game is all about matchups. How the 49ers match up with Arizona is ultimately going to be the key to whether they win or not. So that's why I like these episodes, because we can go through, talk about the players, talk about the matchups, and just really get in-depth on how these things are going to go. But please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. If you're listening to audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe Network, please give it a five-star rating. And if you're going to bet, bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. You think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, Head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. And I I like to talk about the coaches when I'm kind of setting the tone for uh, the game because the coaches and the way that they coach is going to sketch up the scheme and how each team plans on attacking each other. And so I brought up Jonathan Gannon. And Jonathan Gannon had a very talented and very respectable defense when he was in Philly. That defensive line was able to bring pressure consistently, and they just played very tough defense. Now, since he's came to Arizona, of course, he's still trying to get the players that he wants that fits his defense. He's made a couple of moves here and there that have helped kind of bring along that process. He has an all-pro safety in Buda Baker. He has Kaiser White, who he brought over from Philadelphia, But for the most part, this isn't exactly the team so far that he's built. They don't have those studs on the defensive line like he had in Philadelphia. 
And when it comes to stopping the run, they're absolutely leaking oil. That's not something that they're doing at a good level right now. So you can look at this team and you can find some real weaknesses when it comes to defense, which is a little bit more surprising when you're talking about a defensive-minded head coach. Usually they put a point of emphasis on that defense as far as drafting and bringing in players, and, and they have. Uh, they've got Darius Robinson and some guys that they've brought in that they expect are going to help this football team moving forward. But right now, he's on IR. They're not exactly having those guys. So Gannon's going to be handling the defense, and the defense is very similar scheme-wise to what you saw when he was in Philadelphia. And so there's no real uh, surprises. There's a lot of five-man looks. They have Zaven Collins, who used to be a stack linebacker um, in the NFL. He was drafted a first round by the Arizona Cardinals a while back out of Tulsa. Now he plays edge defender. And this is his second season doing it. And while he's a big-bodied individual that can move really fast and has the ability to play edge, sometimes he gives up ground when it comes to setting the edge in the run game. You look on the other side, and they got Gardeck. And Gardeck is fun to watch. The guy flies around, had the interception against the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, they ran a zone blitz. He dropped off right out of Jared Goff's vision and then flowed right into it, made a great interception. He's got a good feel, and so he's a good player. But he's a little slight. He doesn't have the size. You can get a push on him on the edge. So you can see little things that you can attack on the Arizona defense, and Gannon's going to have to try to figure out how to stop the 49ers from doing that, and we're going to get into that even deeper. Now, when you look at their offensive coordinators, Drew Petzing, and Petzing spent time as a quarterback coach for the Cleveland Browns. Last week, we talked about Alex Van Pelt, offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. Where did he come from? The Cleveland Browns. He was offensive coordinator for Kevin Stefanski. This week, it's not much different. Now you've got Drew Petzing. He was on that staff at the same time. So you're getting similar principles when it comes to offensive coordinator and the way that they scheme and call plays. Yes, they got Kyler Murray. Yes, there's a running element to that offense, but it's now predicated on a little bit more heavy sets, running the football a lot more with James Conner, and allowing that run game to kind of set up the passing game, more play action than we've seen in Arizona when Kyler Murray's there at, for, a, for a long time. And we know this is a far cry from what Cliff Kingsbury did. But just to give you an idea in the shift of philosophy, not that they don't have talent at wide receiver, really good talented tight ends, but it's that they re like to rely now on the run game and use the run game to establish the passing game. They run the ball at about 45% of the time. So not bad in the NFL. That's actually pretty balanced. Not everyone can pull off the 49ers 51 to 48 type thing where they really stay balanced. And I know 51, 48, you figure the percentages, so you, you get it. Uh, but the 49ers are a really balanced offense and Arizona is trying to be more balanced. They're trying to be more talented. Uh, and I think that Drew Petzing has added a little bit of stability. And in that matchup against the Rams, the four, or the Cardinals had a lot of success in some heavy sets, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, but you got you know another uh, Stefanski guy, so similar principles to what you saw last week. So it's kind of nice for the 49ers that there's not a huge adjustment as far as scheme-wise. When it comes to personnel, it is a lot different from the Patriots. The Cardinals have wide receivers that can beat you. Um, they have Marvin Harrison Jr., the first-round pick. They have Greg Dortch, who's got the speed. They got Michael Wilson, who's a big physical receiver, who gave the 49ers some fits last season. So talented guys along this wide receiver room. And as far as tight end, I don't know how much more talented it gets than Trey McBride. Dude is an absolute stud. I think he's the second-best tight end in the entire division of the NFC West. And he was out last week with a concussion. He'll be coming back full guns blazing. And the 49ers are going to have to deal with uh, Trey McBride in this football game. Now, when it comes to the defensive coordinator, I mean, he Nick Rollis is not exactly you know the, the guy who's going to be calling the plays. That's going to be Jonathan Gannon. But he's been with Gannon for a long time, and he's going to help structure and put together this game plan. Used to be linebacker coach for the Philadelphia Eagles when Jonathan Gannon was the defensive coordinator. Now, when it comes to the 49ers, offensive game plan, it's got to start with running the football. And part of the reason that it's important for the 49ers to run the football in this game is that is a strength matching up with an Arizona Cardinals weakness. And it's not a subtle weakness. It's an immense weakness. 
The Arizona Cardinals give up 146 yards per game on the ground. Last week, they gave up a tremendous amount of yards on the ground. They give, they've they given up over the last uh, few games against Detroit. They gave up over 180. They gave up over 200, you know, beyond that last week. It has just been dominant performance. Giving up 218 yards to the Washington Commanders, that's not successful football. Giving up over 180 to the Detroit Lions, and Detroit Lions got a good running game. But still, that is unbelievable amount of success on the ground. And it's not like they're just sitting back and not bringing pressure. They're trying to load the box. They're trying to put the onus on the 40, on the, the, def, the offense they're going against to throw the football. They just haven't been able to make it happen. So 49ers average 141 yards per game, mostly with Jordan Mason being the get bell cow back for the 49ers. They will sprinkle in a little bit of Debo, which I expect to see a couple of times in this game. I kind of like how Kyle did it last week. You got it started with Debo. Jordan Mason came in and handled business. So you can sprinkle in some Debo here and there. You'll see some Isaac Garendo as well. But I think the 49ers know that this is a game that if you can get your run game going, uh, you can absolutely shorten this game. So the 49ers are the number one team when it comes to time of possession over 34 minutes a game. Talking about a 60-minute game, and the 49ers are holding it for, for more than 30 of it, so more than half. Staying on the field like that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Number one, they have to keep making plays. Number two, uh, they start to wear down as the game progresses, and you can potentially have some big-time runs or big-time shots down the field that could work for your football team. So running the ball consistently is going to be a big part of this game plan for the San Francisco 49ers offense. And I talked a little bit about attacking the edge. The 49ers outside zone play is the play they'll probably want to run the most. Uh, get those guys on the edge moving. And how do they do that? Well, get a tight end to start with them. Get use check uh, to come get a little push and then run underneath it. Now, I expect Arizona to be aggressive and try to not allow the 49ers to do that. So one of the ways that you can kind of fix that. So what the Rams did to the Niners was they took their outside linebackers and they jumped them inside, and they went with inside stick moves to get them in the inside gap, and then use linebackers, uh, the interior linebackers or corners or safeties as force defenders to come up and really set a hard edge for the defense. What the 49ers have done with some of their adjustments is they've planned for that to happen. When those guys cut in, they just kick them down, and then they take the play outside. So a play that was destined to go off tackle between the tackle and tight end, they're now moving a gap over and taking it outside. Those short tosses allow Jordan Mason to be able to have the vision to see. It, okay, they went ahead and jumped inside. I'm going to take this one outside. Or uh, he stayed outside. Now we're going to get vertical, go in that C gap, and try to get some positive yards. So you have built-in ways to handle that type of defensive philosophy and that kind of defensive change. So that's where you want to attack, though. You have an opportunity there. Their defensive ends are not great. Their outside linebackers who play the outside edge are a little bit smaller, and you can be physical there. So I think the 49ers are going to have some ability to get the run game going with Jordan Mason, and I expect him to kind of get rolling. And why that's important, once you establish a consistent running game, then Brock Purdy can have success with the play-action game. And there are opportunities to run play-action. You go back and you watch that Detroit game, and Jared Goff had some open wide receivers, some open tight ends from getting that play action going. The Cardinals, when the run game started going, started selling out, putting more players in the box, sending Buda Baker on blitzes. And when that happened and they weren't able to get home, Jared Goff with a little boot, bam, open receiver, and it's a nice play for his football team. So getting that consistent run game going is going to set up the play action game for the 49ers. And that's really going to help this offense get rolling. And you got to just stick with running those big personnels. And I know that there's a lot of pressure to get three wide receivers on the field the way that Jawan Jennings is playing and Ayuk and Debo, right? You can get those three wide receivers. And there are advantages against their corners, which I'll talk about in a second. But running 21 and 12 personnel uh, this week and, and keeping the Arizona Cardinals in their base set could be one of the best things for you. You can run the football consistently against that look, but also you're going to have unique matchups that you can find in the passing game. 
I think these are opportunities for the 49ers to get some wins, some matchups for Kyle Juszczyk, some matchups for George Kittle that they like to take advantage of. And one of the keys could be getting Debo Samuel matched up with one of their interior linebackers. I love Debo Samuel in this game against Kaiser White and Mac Wilson. I think that those are advantages 49ers. And normally that's what you would be looking at with Christian McCaffrey. But Debo can kind of take a little bit of that role if we put him in the backfield and use him as a receiver. I think they could use Jordan Mason a little bit more, but Debo's skills definitely give you an opportunity to use him in that manner. And how they're going to determine if Debo is considered a running back or a wide receiver for personnel grouping, and I'm talking about the Cardinals, is going to be unique. Can they figure it out? I think it's going to be fun to see if they can. Now, talking about the 49ers' weapons, I like the wide receivers for the 49ers matched up against the Cardinals' cornerbacks. You talk about Sean Murphy bunting. He's the best of the Cardinals' cornerbacks, but he's not a lockdown, shutdown corner. 49ers got to feel like any one of those three top wide receivers can get open against Murphy bunting. It's not that he won't compete and that he'll be tough at times, but you still have the opportunity to win against Sean Murphy bunting. Now, when you look at the other two, Starling Thomas plays opposite of him. And Starling Thomas, young player, very eager to, to make plays, but that's what causes him to make mistakes. I don't think he's consistent enough. I don't think his technique is good enough right now. He's athletic. He's got all the ability that way. But I think right now he's not capable of hanging with the 49ers wide receivers. And I like any one of those three matched up against Starling Thomas. I think there's advantage 49ers there. Then you look in the slot, and they're going to have their nickel corner, Garrett Williams. And I love Jawan Jennings and Debo Samuel against Garrett Williams. I love George Kittle as well in that matchup. So the 49ers don't just have an advantage in the run game. I feel like they have a distinct advantage in the passing game too. Some of those matchups work in the 49ers' favor. And I know that George Kittle's probably going to see a lot of Buda Baker in this game. But if you can get him off of Buda Baker and going against Jalen Thompson, and I like Jalen Thompson. I think he's a solid safety. I do think the Arizona Cardinals have the best safety room in the NFC West. With that being said, if you can get Buda Baker having to be active and stopping the run, and you can get George Kittle one-on-one, -on -one, with Jalen Thompson, I think that's advantage 49ers. And Kittle getting matched up with him or either one of the interior linebackers, White or Wilson, I think is advantage 49ers. So just a couple of things you can do there, but advantage in the run game and obvious advantage in the passing game, whether that's using the outside wide receivers or George Kittle. This has been probably one of the games that I've looked at for the 49ers offense and seen the most mismatches of any because you just have the weapons to be able to handle it. And when you look at the Cardinals' defensive line, it's not that it's bad, but they definitely aren't as talented when it comes to edge and speed. We talked about Darius Robinson being on the IR. That's a big loss. You talk about B.J. Ojolari being out for the year. That's a big loss. Both of those guys would have been able to put pressure on the outside and really potentially cause problems for guys like Colt McKivitz. But that's not the case. You know, the guys rushing off the edge, we talked about it a little bit. Dennis Kardec, Zayvon Collins, uh, they've got some speed. But I, I think that Holden McKivitz should be able to hold up for the most part. They're not going to overwhelm him with speed and power, which is his problem. He can usually handle one or the other. It's the guys with the combination of both that give him a real problem, which is why uh, Darius Robinson would have been a little bit of a problem for him. But now, I think he can handle it. And when you talk about the guys who are going to be on the inside, I'm not really worried about Dante Stills versus Dominic Pooney or Aaron Banks. I think they can hold up. And so I think the Cardinals do have some speed on the inside with the defensive line. But I think the 49ers are going to be just fine. And if they can establish a run game and get to the play action, not going to be traditional pass sets, makes it even easier for the 49ers offense. Now let's talk about defense. And what is the key to this football game? And what's the game plan? Well, that's easy. Stop James Conner and the Cardinals' running game. The Cardinals, they're no joke when it comes to running the football. They average 153 yards per game on the ground, and the Connor is a big reason why. Talked about Trey Benson a little bit, and then you got to throw in Kyler Murray. He also 
uh, has been dominant when it comes to the ground game. And he gets a lot of yards. And he was the leading rusher against Detroit. Detroit did a good job bottling up James Conner. But Kyler Murray still had some effective runs. Some of those design, some of those scrambles. And so he's been doing a really good job. But you have to make the Cardinals one-dimensional. Put the onus on Kyler Murray to win from the pocket and for those wide receivers to win against the 49ers secondary. It's not that they're void of talent. We talked about Trey McBride. He's really good. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him and his game, and he's going to put pressure on the 49ers defense. But let's put the onus on the rookie Marvin Harrison Jr. And let's put the onus on Michael Wilson and the other guys to go ahead and make plays. And so let's talk about their wide receiver room just for a second. And you see, you know, I mean, the, the guys out there making plays, Greg Dorch, Michael Wilson. Uh, they also got Zach Pascal. Uh, Xavier Weaver will come in sometimes. So it's not that they don't have talent, but I think they match up pretty well. The 49ers feel like they, they're going to match up well with them because we have bigger corners, more physical in their makeup. A guy like Charvarius Ward, he doesn't mind getting physical with the opposing team. So I, I think that it's going to come down to stopping the run, though. And how do you do that? Well, you got to get back into those five defensive man fronts. So I went back and watched Detroit. I went back and watched the Washington game. And we know the Rams run a five-man front. They weren't as successful stopping the running game uh, for the Cardinals. But the Detroit Lions, five, six men at the line of scrimmage, brought a lot of guys in the box and said, you're not running the football on us. You go to your 12 and 13 personnel, you're not having success against us. Now, when they went 12 and 13 personnel, which is one running back, two tight ends, or one running back, three tight ends, they had tremendous success throwing the football against the Los Angeles Rams. So we'll talk about that aspect in a moment as well. But when they're in those sets, they're predominantly wanting to run the football with Connor, and they're trying to overpower and overwhelm defenses. If the 49ers stay in their base 4-3, and they have to bring a safety in. Well, why not just bring an extra defensive lineman, cut off some of those gaps, and take away that running game? Now, the Cardinals are still going to try. If the Cardinals are, are successful against a five-man run uh, defense, that's going to be a problem for the Niners. But I think uh, going ahead and running that five-man front, being willing to blitz, run blitz-wise, to stop James Conner is going to be huge in this game. You have to stop the run game. It is imperative. If you're a 49ers uh, defense, you have to stop the run game. That will slow down the Arizona Cardinals offense. You watch the Commanders game. Commanders early on in that game are getting ran over by James Conner. The first drive, it's boom, 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 down the field for the touchdown. You see the second drive start to move, and then all of a sudden, Dan Quinn adjusts, and he goes to a five-man front, and they get put a lot of guys to the line of scrimmage, and they start making plays and slowing down that Cardinals running game. And guess what? That Cardinals offense slowed down as well. Slow against Detroit, slow against the Commanders. One thing in common, run got slowed down. So that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Now, with that being said, when they're in 12 and 13 personnel, they get you in your base sets or heavy sets like that. They get some matchups they like on the outside. One of those matchups they liked against the Rams was Marvin Harrison Jr. against not-so-talented cornerbacks. Now, the 49ers have Charverius Ward. They have De'Amra Lenore. So they got to feel comfortable probably with both of those guys covering Marvin Harrison. So maybe they don't feel as inclined uh, to worry about like a safety over the top or something like that against Harrison Jr., but he is a talented football player. So when they go in those 12 and 13 personnel groupings, got to make sure you still focus on the one wide receiver and 13 personnel. But when you when you get into those sets as well, you've got to, even though you want to sell out on the run, you've got to pay attention to Trey McBride, uh, to Tip Ryman, you know, to these tight ends for the Arizona Cardinals. They're pretty good. And I thought I forgot about Elijah Higgins as well. Uh, so getting those guys the football is going to be, you know, one of the things you have to make sure, I'm sorry, when they're trying to get them the football, keeping the ball away from them is going to be key. And those three tight ends out there together where Ryman's a good blocker, uh, Elijah Higgins does a pretty good job, and McBride is well-balanced. You've got to worry about those guys taking advantage of you in the passing game when they go 12 and 13 personnel. So 49ers safeties are going to have to make sure they're on their P's and Q's, and I don't care which ones it is. You've got to make sure you locate those tight ends, and especially Trey McBride. So they come in with those heavy looks. Yes, you got to sell out and stop the run, 
but you also got to make sure you play pass first. And so lock him down, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on those 49er safeties. And right now, guys like Jair Brown and Malik Mustafa haven't been playing consistently good. They've had moments, they've had flashes, and, and I love that. Uh, but they're going to have to be really good in this football game. And that's one of the problems, right? You stop the run, you sell out, and it leaves something else open. And the 49ers are going to have to stop that. And I think they can, but they're going to have to make sure they uh, account for Trey McBride. And it's going to be probably on the safeties. So I don't like a matchup of Trey McBride on any one of the 49ers linebackers not named Fred Warner. If, you know, I mean, you just don't like it. Maybe D Winters, but uh, for the most part, I don't like the other matchups. He's too good uh, for you to go with any of those other looks. Now, keep using run blitzes to fill gaps and keep the Cardinals off balance. Uh, those run blitzes are also good because then it gives the offensive coordinator a look. And it also means that offensive linemen feel that you're willing to send blitzers. It's not just for looks. Sometimes when you simulate blitz and you never come, at some point, they just kind of ignore it and they don't worry about it. But you can keep them engaged and you can keep them honest by sometimes running run blitzes. I think it's important for the 49ers to do to keep their linebackers free and able to flow and put, once again, the onus on taking the ball out of James Conner's hands and keeping it in Kyler Murray's hands. But if you're going to keep it in Kyler Murray's hands, you got to keep him in the pocket. Because if you let Kyler Murray escape the pocket, he can still beat you with his arm down the field but he can absolutely beat you with his legs. I mean, the guy moves so fast. He looks like Mario when he got the star and he just takes off full speed. That's what he looks like when he's out in the open field. And the 49ers know that it's going to be about uh, pass rush lane integrity this week. So last week you were able to tee off. You were able to get after Jacoby Brissett. He's a more stationary target. So those two edge defenders, they can fly upfield. Those guys on the inside, they can use a lot of moves. They don't have to worry about getting pushed out of their area and keep their rush lane integrity. Well, this week you do. Uh, this week you need to make sure when you get when you go after him and as far as pass rush that you don't allow yourself to create open lanes for him to run. That means your edge guys, they can't go as far upfield as they want. They've got to make sure they try to bend the corner a lot tighter. When you look at the interior defensive line, it's going to be about getting a more of a push. And if you are going to make a move, do not allow yourself to get pushed one way or the other. East and West type movement, not good in this. I think one way that Coach Nick Sorensen could help the pass rush out is by sending a fifth defender, by sending a linebacker or a safety, whether they're coming from the outside or the inside, you can kind of clog up another gap. Now, when you do that, right, you make it so there's less guys in coverage, and all of a sudden there's six guys in coverage instead of seven, which you ultimately want. So you've got to mix it in at times, but it's a good way to keep Kyler Murray in the pocket. And when it comes to the 49ers pass rush, it's not as important to get home and get the sack as it is to keep him in the pocket. And then when he goes to deliver the football, get your hands up. Uh, you can get a lot of batted balls against Kyler Murray. You can make him feel uncomfortable and he can ultimately get sacked. Kyler Murray, when he's sacked, he usually loses a lot of yardage. For a couple years that he started multiple games, uh, he was the one that lost the most yardage on sacks. So he's been sacked 10 times this season. There are opportunities to get home for the 49ers, but sacks are not the main objective. The main objective is keep Kyler Murray in the pocket when he's trying to throw. When it comes to designed runs, you just got to make sure when you're playing the read option, if it's your job to have the quarterback, you play the quarterback. Yes, you have to squeeze it down. You can't leave a nice gap for James Conner to be able to cut back. But you also got to kind of split the difference to keep Kyler Murray from keeping the football and getting around the edge. Mixing up his read keys is also going to be important. Sometimes don't make it as clear as defensive end is squeezing, but he he's not going down the line all the way, so I'm going to give. Sometimes have that defensive end he be different, have him go after running back and have an outside linebacker step up on the outside and have Kyler Murray. That could be a, a way you can't do it all the time, but you mix it up. And then sometimes you send the defensive end down, you send the linebacker, go stop the run, and you bring a safety off the edge. And he's the one that accounts for Kyler Murray. There's a lot of ways and unique ways you can keep him off his balance, change his read keys, and make him feel uncomfortable, even in design runs. We'll see how they go and handle this. But Brandon Staley, 
Uh, he's been around for a while. He coached against, you know, the Arizona Cardinals, but he's coached against the Stefanski style offense as well. So it's an interesting uh, dynamic going against this offense, but it could be fun. Another question I have for the 49ers defense, how do you handle Marvin Harrison Jr.? And it's not that I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is just going to smoke them or anything. I just mean personnel-wise. I think the 49ers feel comfortable with Charvarius Ward and Diamond Lenore being one-on-one with Marvin Harrison if need be. But what do you do if you're a nickel and all of a sudden Isaac Yedem or Renardo Green are in? Do you feel comfortable with Isaac Yedem one-on-one with Marvin Harrison on a go route? Do you feel comfortable with Renardo Green in that situation? I think that's where we're going to find out how much confidence the 49ers defense has in those players. Because if you don't have a lot of confidence in those type looks, you've got to run a safety over the top. Does that mean you're running a two deep safety look? Does that mean all of a sudden you've got a, a cover one, but you've got the safety over the top on that side or cheating to that side? The 49ers got to figure this thing out. And so uniquely how they play Marvin Harrison is going to be key. Now what they could do when they go to nickel package at Diamond and has to slide inside, they could just have Charvarius Ward follow Marvin Harrison Jr. And just say, all right, a big body on big body. You go handle it. We'll look at the other side. Isaac Yedem, Renardo Green, you guys get Michael Wilson, you know, or, or uh, Greg Dorch or whoever else is out there. That's who you're going to handle. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And if they go ahead and travel Charvarius Ward for the first time this season, they could potentially do that. Now, I spoke of Greg Dorch a little bit. Tremendous speed. One thing I want to keep an eye on if I'm the 49ers is Greg Dortch in the slot running a slot fade against Diomero Lenore. That speed element for him, and he's unassuming because he's small, could create an opportunity down the field. We've seen him do it in the past. He's just, he's got a different, different gear when it comes to speed. They'll do the same thing with Marvin Harrison Jr. So Lenore's going to have to be prepared for the slot fade this week. Now let's talk about third down. Uh, 49ers, Conversion rate on third down, 44%. Cardinals, 43%. Both offenses, kind of middle of the road in the league. Uh, not great, but good. Uh, they're not bad. They're not great. They're good. And so that's a good thing. Now, when you look at the defenses, both defenses aren't good on third down. 49ers defense has been getting better as the season's progressed. They've got their third down conversion percentage allowed down to 46%. But the Cardinals... They're at 45%. Neither one of these defenses consistently get off the field. Both would love to see this closer to 35%. So you're talking 10% over the great level you want to be at. And for the 49ers, I think they'd be happy anywhere around 40 at this point. So third down conversions are going to be huge. That Part of the reason the 49ers stay on the field so long is they get those third down conversions. So both of these run games, if they're successful, there's probably going to be a high rate of third down conversions. If your run game gets slowed down, your conversion rate will probably go down. Red zone offense has been a problem for the 49ers this season. They're scoring touchdowns at a 50% rate, which is way down from what it was last season where they scored it at 68%, and that was tops in the league. 68% scoring touchdowns is a great number, and the 49ers are at 50%. They need to get better. They need to find unique ways and to create opportunities. I think one thing they could do is get Debo involved Get him in the backfield. Go with four wide receivers on the field and then then George Kittle. But then use Debo as the running back type. I think what that would do is spread out a defense and give you some opportunities. You could still run the ball with Debo Samuel. You still have good blockers out there with Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, and George Kittle, and Chris Conley if you went with that grouping. So you've got some opportunities for a Debo Samuel in the run game. you got opportunities that way in the passing game. Could be a unique look. You're probably just going to run the ball a lot with Jordan Mason as well because Arizona can't stop it. They'll sell out for it. But the Cardinals on offense in the red zone are absolutely fantastic. When they get in the red zone, they score touchdowns at a 72% rate. That is phenomenal. 49ers cannot allow the Cardinals to score at that high rate. So what that means, don't even let them in the red zone. If you're independent, don't break. Don't let them get past that 20. Make sure that you keep them out of there and force uh, Prater field goals from deeper than what they normally would be. So 49ers red zone offense, they've got to be better. And Arizona Cardinals, uh, they've got to slow down the Cardinals uh, offense, which has been superb this season. 
we look at red zone defense, 49ers consistently, the numbers coming down, they're getting better and better percentage wise. They're giving up touchdowns at 58%. That's still too high. And now they're going to go against a Cardinals offense is so good in the red zone. So they're going to have to, they're going to have to play it tough. I would suggest you just don't even let them in the red zone. Now, when you look at the Cardinals, they're at 68% of giving up touchdowns. 49ers have an opportunity. So 49ers defense in the red zone, not spectacular. Cardinals red zone defense, even worse. Uh, so you're going to have opportunities if you're the 49ers offense to score. And I think coming up with some unique looks could get that done. So get in the red zone, get some points against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, when you look at giveaways, the 49ers have turned the ball over five times this season. The Cardinals have turned it over four. Neither one of these teams turned the ball over more than just over one turnover a game for the Cardinals. It is one per game. You look at takeaways, 49ers have four, seven turnovers. Most of those are by Fred Warner, who's having just the most remarkable season. He's been fantastic. And the Cardinals are at four. So 49ers almost doubled up the Cardinals as far as turnovers. If the 49ers win the turnover battle, they will likely win this football game. Uh, that's just how it is. And then you look at turnover differential, 49ers plus two, Cardinals at zero. Uh, so they're even. So turnovers haven't been the reason they've lost football games this season. It's been other things. So they're still a good football team. Uh, but, you know, you got to make sure you win the turnover battle. So let's get into our Wow That's Bold predictions brought to you by 49ersCutbackShop.com where you can get all your 49ers Cutback merch and 49ers Inspired merch. The link is in the description section down below. Go check it out. Wow, that's bold predictions. Wow, that's really bold. <laughs> It's got to be really bold. It's got to be, whoa. And you know what? Last week, I did pretty good once again. I've been pretty much hitting on one in offense, one on defense, and then the other one uh, missing out, sometimes close, sometimes not so close. Uh, but last week, I had George Kittle on offense with a touchdown. That happened. Spectacular catch. Thanks, George Kittle, for that. And I had IU getting in the end zone. Uh, but unfortunately for us, Brock Purdy did try to get him the football, and it ended up being an interception. Well, this week, I'm being a little bit more bold. I'm taking a little bit more chances. And I'm saying that the San Francisco 49ers offense is going to have their best game in the red zone that they've had so far. And I think they're going to go perfect in the red zone. Touchdowns on every single trip that they get inside the 20. And so I, I think they're going to have one heck of a game in the red zone. I don't think the Arizona Cardinals defense is good enough to stop Jordan Mason and run game in the red zone or some of the unique things that Kyle Shanahan's going to have at his disposal to use against Arizona. So that's what you're going to get. And then I've got Debo Samuel being highly effective in this game and scoring two touchdowns, not one, but two for Debo Samuel. Aggressive style offense this week, taking advantage of him in the red zone a little bit. I think there's going to be opportunities uh, for some screens and other things that he's going to take advantage of, and he's going to make some plays. So uh, on offense, 49ers will be perfect in the red zone. And Debo Samuel will have two touchdowns. Like I said, it's got to be wow. It's got to be bold. And it is bold and it's whoa. Uh, and let's talk about defense. Last week, I had the 49ers generating two turnovers on defense. They created three. So they actually did better than I anticipated. But check, they got that done. I had Leonard Floyd getting a sack. He did not. He did, however, have six hurries and one of his best games this season. And on the brink of, of sack, but didn't get it done. So I didn't get that one correct. But I felt pretty good about his performance, what I saw on film. Now this week, I'm calling for a interception by Jair Brown. I think there's going to be an opportunity. Uh, Kyler Murray doesn't like throwing over the middle of the field, but the way the 49ers are going to make this defense go, I think there's going to be an opportunity for Jair to get the ball and a tip or something else. And Jair gets an interception. And then I think that when it comes down to it, the 49ers are going to get four sacks on Kyler Murray. And it might sound crazy, but the way that the 49ers are going to rush him, I really think he's going to hold on to the football and try to make plays down the field. And I think that's going to end up being a situation where they can get him to the ground. And so I do believe, even though he's a good scrambler, they're going to get to Kyler Murray four times in this football game. I think they're going to Bring the pressure. They're going to bring it often. They're going to bring extra guys to keep him in the pocket. 
And I think they're going to have some success against Kyler Murray and get him to the ground four times. So it was well, it was wow, that's bold pr uh, predictions. Let me know what you think your predictions are going to be. Let me know in the comment section. I'm always curious about everyone's bold predictions. But now's the time. We are going to have the game prediction. Are, is it going to be 49ers? Is it going to be Cardinals? Well, here we go. I think the 49ers are going to win this football game. And I think they're because they're going to be perfect for the red zone, they're going to put up a lot of points in this game. The Cardinals are giving up 26.8 points per game, and I think the 49ers are going to well surpass that. And I think that the 49ers are going to do a lot on the run, in the run game. They're going to be able to have success in the passing game because of that success in the run game. I got the San Francisco 49ers winning their first divisional game of the year, 35-20 to 20 against the Arizona Cardinals. I do think the Cardinals are going to have some success running the football at times. I think they are going to score points in this game, and they're going to get the 49ers season average on defense allowed, points allowed at 20. But I think that the 49ers offense is just too much, and I don't think this Arizona Cardinals defense is good enough to stop the 49ers offense. So it's going to be a fun one. I think the 49ers get a big win, a divisional win, improved to 3-2, and two, puts the Cardinals in a tough situation at 1-4, and four, but then the 49ers turn their attention directly to the Seattle Seahawks after they've got a Thursday night matchup after that. So big win versus Arizona. Then you've got to turn it into another big win against the division leading Seattle Seahawks. So that's going to be a fun one. But let me know your score predictions down below as well. I want to see, are we close? Do you think it's going to be a high scoring game? Uh, what's your opinions on this? It, it's going to be fun. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate it. Listening audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe Network. Please give it a five-star rating and subscribe. Uh, that does a lot to help. You can subscribe on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen. And it really means a lot, so I appreciate that. And, of course, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe. And remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.